Tonight begins the journey to replace an old government that costs you more and delivers you less with a new government that puts you first, your paycheck, your retirement, your home, your country. And of course, the voice of uh, Pierre Polyev, after he won the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. And uh, now the wheels are turning and uh, the please be scared. You must be scared of Pierre Polyev messaging is beginning, as you're hearing, if you pay attention. Um, and it's sort of the same thing that they did to Stephen Harper. The tanks, remember that uh, that television commercial the CBC ran over and over about the tanks and the streets and all that stuff? The, the situation is this. Pierre Polyev had to satisfy the members of the Conservative Party that he is the appropriate person to lead the party. That was objective number one, which he achieved. The next objective that he has is to persuade Canadians, the people of Canada, that he's the right person to be the Prime Minister of Canada. That is his job. That is what he's going to try to do. You decide for yourself who you think the Prime Minister of Canada should be. The current Prime Minister has said he's going to run again. And uh, Mr. Polyev obviously is running, and Mr. Singh is starting to make noise about, well, if you don't satisfy us, if you're the Liberals, we may change our deal with you. Well, I think Mr. Singh is starting to realize that that deal was just a bad idea. Poor idea. Okay, let's talk to Senator Denise Batters. Senator Batters was an early supporter of Pierre Polyev, and we know the senator had uh, a challenging situation with the former leader of the Conservative Party, Aaron O'Toole. And uh, when the senator challenged Mr. O'Toole's leadership, saying, hey, we need an early review, which I agreed with, he expelled her from the caucus. What was interesting is that the Conservative Senate caucus did not expel the senator. Senator Batters, how are you? Thanks for joining us. I'm very well. Thanks so much for having me on today. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's... Uh a great day to be Canadian. It's a great day to be Conservative Party Canada a member. So what should Canadians know and understand about Pierre Polyev as leader of the Conservative Party? And why did you support him as early as you did? Well, I have known Pierre for quite some time. Um, he first got elected in 2004, the same year as my husband did. So what I certainly knew about Pierre, I've seen him um, really progress as a politician all of these years. And uh, he's always proven to be a fighter, someone who stands up for as a champion of working Canadians. And right now, it's a very challenging situation. We have 40-year high inflation. We have rising taxes. Um, exacerbated by this terrible Trudeau government. We have stagnating wages and skyrocketing house prices, and it's a perfect time for someone who is actually a champion of working Canadians, not just talks about it, um, to try to uh, help Canadians. And I knew that Pierre, having known him for so long, um, I knew that he is a man that does what he says he will do. And uh, unlike um, the situation that we previously had, where we had a leader who flip-flopped and uh, on, on very key issues, I knew that Pierre is someone who would never do that. So one of the questions that's going to be raised is, of course, about unity within the Conservative Party of Canada. Mr. Charest came in second, 16% of the vote. He's now departed. I asked him early in the leadership campaign, if you don't win, will you leave? He chose not to answer that question. I knew what, I knew what the answer was. I think we all did. So is are you confident that under the leadership of Pierre Polyev, the party will be unified? Yes. The Conservative Party of Canada right now is more united today than at any point since leadership of Stephen Harper. And I think that that's proven by the fact that not only did Pierre win an overwhelming majority last weekend with 71% of the vote in this leadership race, he also won clear majorities of the vote in every single province, including Quebec, which he won with over 60%. And this was against former Liberal Premier of Quebec um, who ran against him. And Pierre won 330 out of 338 ridings. 
he also received endorsements from the majority of our conservative caucus. And all of this is important to remember, that this is with a much larger conservative membership than has ever existed before. We now have 680,000 Conservative Party of Canada members, more than double the previous record membership high. And 417,000 Conservative members voted in this leadership race. So with all those numbers, numbers, an excellent way to take a step forward to the very important next step, which is actually um, trying to become government in this country, taking down this terrible, tired, awful Trudeau government and uh, and helping Canadians to make... Senator, what, what do you make of the fact that uh, news stories, headline news stories, are about Quebec um, Conservative members who don't believe in Pierre Polyev, uh, have left the party uh, one sitting as an independent. The party has apologized for um, text messages that were sent um, challenging, um, let me be kind, challenging one of the members. What do you make of all that? Well, um, Mr. Reyes, um, who I've sat in caucus with for quite some time, he's made his decision. Um, the rest of the Quebec caucus has actually loudly and enthusiastically united around Mr. Polyev. I mean, leadership races can be long and difficult, as this one was, and some find it a bit more difficult to move on. That's fine, but it's time to shift focus now to fighting just inflation and liberal mismanagement. And I want to also point out that I come from the PC side of the equation prior to the merger of the parties, and I find no conflict with my principles with Mr. Polyev as leader. And I also know that in the last leadership race, I supported the former leader of the Progressive Conservative Canada, Party of Canada, Peter McKay, Mr. Reyes did not. Hmm. What do you make? Uh, well, let me ask you this. Uh, put it this way. Do you think that media, national media in this country are fair to Mr. Polyev? Well, some are and some aren't. I mean, I'm certainly not going to group all of them together. Um, and you know what? That's why I think it, we've made it a big priority to speak directly to Canadians as much as possible um, to You know, Pierre has been excellent about doing videos that Canadians can actually understand. I was just speaking to um, a woman around my age in my province yesterday who doesn't really follow politics all that much, but she had seen the video that Pierre just did um, quite recently, um, pretending that he was having breakfast with Justin Trudeau and telling him about all the significant problems of inflation and how much everything in that breakfast was costing now as compared to previously, and things that Justin Trudeau really needs to... Um, realize about this country. And that's the kind of thing that she really appreciated because she was hearing this um, from, you know, from someone that she may not have normally heard this in the mainstream news, but she saw it on on a video that he did. And there's no one better at talking directly to Canadians and telling them about these sometimes complicated issues, boiling it right down. That's an important thing for Canadians that have very little time in their daily lives to be, you know, dissecting the daily news, but they want to hear from people who are actually going to make their life better and understand the issues that they're struggling with. I'm going to be speaking with Chad Bowie right after I speak with you. He wrote an op-ed in the National Post this week. It's all about words, and Pierre Polyev continues to choose the right one. We're going to talk to him about that. I have time for one more question for you. I had a lot more questions, but I have time for one more. This is an increasingly divided country. And uh, one divide is very clear, the East-West divide. You're from Western Canada, Saskatchewan. How do you see, Mr. Polyev, addressing the issue of division within Canada, but even beyond East-West? How will he be able to unify the Canadian people and the Canadian spirit? What's he got? Well, I think what he's excellent at is he focuses on the topics that unite Canadians, like economic prosperity, sound fiscal management, and personal freedoms. Things like inflation, the cost of it, living crisis, and out-of-control spending, those matter regardless of what language a Canadian speaks or which part of the country they live in. And also, Pierre will end the top-down, Ottawa knows best approach that has defined these Trudeau years on so many issues, like the federal carbon tax. As well, Pierre, he has been an MP in suburban Ottawa for many years now, um, but he also comes from the West. He comes from Calgary, actually, and his parents originally come from Saskatchewan. So he certainly understands many things about this um, this great, vast country that we have, and he understands those issues. But those particular issues are ones that unite us from coast to coast, and we know that we need a better government to deal with them and to actually help Canadians, not just, uh, you know, um, Minister Jolie, Trudeau's 
Foreign Affairs Minister this week said Canadians value their government. Well, what I think we need, and I know what Pierre thinks we need, is that the government values Canadians. If you want to hear more, subscribe to The Roy Green Show on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you find your favorites. And if you like what you hear, leave us a review and tell a friend. I'm Roy Green. Have a great weekend.